today I'm going to be brewing some beer. It's a crappy old day out there, so I thought rather than go fishing, I'd stay at home and have a go at brewing some beer. So, well, to try and explain what I did first time round, I bought a Young's kit. It was like a microbrewery, and you get everything you needed in the kit: a brewing barrel, a fermenting bucket everything and it came with this kit and now uh, this is a Young's India Pale Ale uh, but I decided not to use that because I'd been on the internet and seen reviews for this one which is a uh, Woodford's Wherry so I used that kit instead and uh, it was really good it turned out really well um, made it's about 40 pints um, and it as I say it's pretty straightforward that was a two can kit Whereas this, you just get the one pouch. And in the two can kit, the brewing sugar is already mixed with the, in the can, so you don't have to add the sugar separately. Um, with, with this particular kit, the Young's kit, you have to add hops, but you do that later on in the process. So I thought I'd give this kit a go because I've drunk all the other, all the other beer, and um, I'm a bit too tight to go out and pay 25 quid for another Woodford's Wherry, so I thought I might as well use this kit that came in the, the original kit that I bought. So I've, what I'll be doing today is doing that. But first of all, I've got to sanitise all this equipment because it's all been used before and you have to make sure everything's clean. And to do that, you use this sterilising powder. You just mix it up with a pint of cold water, tip it in, and you put all your other bits and pieces in there, give it a good shake do that in here and um, leave it for 10 minutes but the good thing about this is you can use it over and over again so once you've finished sanitizing that lot you can tip it back into the jug then what I'll do then is I'll what's in the jug I'll pour into that and do the same thing with, with the brewing barrel um, then once you've finished sanitizing everything you have to make sure you rinse it well because it could taint the finished beer if you don't give it a good rinse but once you've rinsed it all then you're good to go then. As I say, reading up about it and watching videos on YouTube, making sure everything's clean is really important because if you don't, you end up with, well, basically you end up with vinegar, I think. And um, I don't like vinegar or anything like that. And I don't like chutney. So if you're watching this, Andy, <laughs> I hate chutney, but that's another matter. <laughs> so what I'll do now is I'll get on I'll sanitize all this stuff and when I've done I'll come back and we'll get on with brewing up, brewing up some beer so I'll see you in a minute right we're back I've sanitized everything um, and what you'll notice is that I've got bottled water well the reason I use bottled water is because I hate the taste of Swindon tap water uh, so we drink filtered water and all the rest of it and bottled water so I thought, why would I put it in a beer mix? So for the sake of, say, five quid, I think it was about a pound a bottle of these big bottles, um, I always use bottled water. Or say always, I used bottled water last time and it was fine. So it's got to be better than the Swindon tap water, which is like drinking liquid rock. So that's what I use. So what I've got to do now is, I've, I've, as I say, I've cleaned everything. Um, with this brew kit you have to mix this which is like the the malt mix you have to mix that with three litres of boiled water so what I'm going to do now is measure out three litres of water boil it up and when I put that in the brewing bucket I'll come back and I'll show you what we do next as I say I always use bottled water um, I think it's got to be better than using the Swindon tap water. I mean, I've known people that use Swindon tap water and they say it's fine, but for the sake of five quid, I just re I'd just rather go out and buy five five of these big big containers and use that. So once I've boiled up the water, um, I'll come back and we'll go from there. Right, that's the last kettle of boiled tap water. So we that's three litres altogether. So that goes in there. So 
so that's three litres of oil tap, oil tap, or oil bottled water. Um, let's write that down. That's three litres of boiled bottled water, and I don't know if I might have forgot to say, we pretty stupid really if I didn't. I'm using this kit that came with all this is the American India Pale Ale. Uh, it's, I think it's American because they use American yeast, but I mean it's India Pale Ale, so that's what we were using. So we put the boiled water in there. Now you've got to cut open the pouch, which has got the the um, malt extract in. And this is pretty messy stuff, so you don't want to spill it and you don't want to get it on your hands if you can help it. And what you do is you just tip that in to the boiled water. And you can see what it's like, it's like treacle. And it's pretty important that you get as much of this out as you can because otherwise it's just it's just a waste. So you tip as you get as much of this as you can out, squeeze it out. Like I said, when I first got this kit, I bought the Woodfords and I used that, which is a different type of kit. It's got two cans and the sugar's already in the in the cans. But this this kit, you have to add the sugar separately. They give you a, a bag of brewing sugar to, to do it. Uh, and this smells, it smells really nice actually. It's really nice malty smell. Oh, no. and, you know on the instructions it sort of stresses that you get as much of this out as you can because I think it all adds to the flavour of the beer at the end so. with the cans it's a bit easier because you can tip boiling water in the cans and rinse them out whereas with this it's because it's a pouch and you can't really do that well you could but I think you'd end up with a real mess <laughs> now, I was really surprised with the, the first kit I did it turned out really well I mean I've often thought about doing brewing and home brew but never, it's one of those things you think, oh, I wouldn't mind doing that, but you never actually get around to doing it. But I sort of decided to give it a go, and uh, I was surprised. You hear so many stories, well, old sort of stories about people trying home brew, and it turns out awful, and people would sort of taste it, and they're too too polite to say it tastes crap. But this one was really good. But I don't, as I say, this is a different one. This is um, the India Pale Ale, so. Hopefully it's be just as just as good. That's what I mean, once you've squashed the bag up together, you can't really do much much with it, but no, I think that's it. As I say with the cans, it was a lot easier because you could fill the cans up with hot water and just rinse, rinse them out and tip it all in. But as you notice I've got the brewing pressure barrel there well that's all been cleaned but I won't be using that because you actually use a pressure barrel when this is fully fermented so what you do when this is finished fermenting you siphon it out into the pressure barrel and then you add a bit of sugar and you just let it do its thing and it, it, the actual finished product will be sort of will be in this barrel but and so we don't need to use that you just take a couple of weeks in in this first That's that. So once you've done that, you use your spoon which has been sterilised and give it a good stir around. 
I don't know if you can see that. I'll put it on the floor, it might be easier. Give it a good stir around to mix it all in. takes quite a bit of mixing because it's it's really thick stuff and actually it smells really nice it's almost tempted to have a, t to have a taste but I did, I, the first time I did it I did and it, it's really nice but I think it's nearly there now. Right, once you've mixed all that in, the next step is to add the sugar. Now, this is already sort of weighed out, so you just add the whole bag. Stir. Right, so it's not it's not just ordinary table sugar it's very very fine it, it must be really it's proper brewing sugar so it, it dissolves really quickly and you don't get any sort of left left behind so you give that a good stir You do then I lift it back up so it's a bit easier to see and so it's in this this uh, fermenting bucket and these kits they come with a, a stick on thermometer so you can tell what the temperature is what you do now is fill it up to the 25 litre mark with cold water so I've got some in there I'll use that a little bit And what this does is sort of bring the temperature down because if the temperature is too high when you when you actually put the yeast in it will just kill the yeast so it needs to be about 25 25 degrees centigrade I think it is thereabouts it's not it's not too critical as long as it's as long as it's not too hot or Obviously it won't be freezing cold because you put boiling water in. So take that to about the 25. The first kit I made, the Woodfords, I felt I was a bit unsure. I think I put too much water in and I was a bit concerned it would be like dishwater, but it turned out okay. So I don't think it's too critical. 
So what you do then, it's just a question of giving it a good stir. Now, you really have to stir it a lot because what the stirring does, it aerates the, the mix. And when you put the yeast in, that helps the yeast to start working. And you, I mean, you have to do this basically for as long as you can. Give it a good stir, good mix, so that you get a good froth on the top. So what I'll do, I'll stop filming now and I'll come back when I've finished doing that. Right, we're back. You see, I've given it a good stir. There's a good froth on the top. Your arm's bloody killing me. But then what you do, you take the yeast. And you just snip the top off. I say, look, none of this is rocket science. It's all pretty, it couldn't be any easier really, but and what you do, you just sprinkle this over the surface. Uh, some people say you should stir, others say you just sprinkle it and leave it. I don't really think, don't know if it makes much difference. So the last time I stirred it, so I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a stir. But I don't think it matters too much. Take that out. Then the next thing you do is put the lid on. Let's say this has all been sterilised. Now you can, at this stage, you can take a specific gravity reading using this, which is a hydrometer. And by doing that, if you take a reading now before the fermentation starts, at the end of the fermentation, before you barrel it, you can take another reading and there's way of doing it is you can find out on the youtube and on the internet or whatever and you can work out the, spe the specific gravity of the, the final beer but i'm not too worried really as long as it tastes okay i'm not too worried and as long as you follow the instructions you know you, you can't really go far wrong so you can do that i i didn't bother well I, I had a go at doing it the first time around but whether i was reading it right or not i don't know but the beer tasted fine anyway so I'm not going to bother with that this time. So what you do is you put the lid on and you make sure it's on really tight until it's snapped right down. Because what will happen during the fermentation process, the yeast will start to work and you'll get a build up of pressure in there, CO2, whatever it's called. And um, you, what you do, you, you put one of these in, which is like an airlock fill it up with a drop of water like that. put the top on snap it on tight you put that in like that and what i'll do is i'll lift this up to the top so you can Yeah, right you lift it up to the top and basically you just leave it to do its thing for normally i think last time it took about 10 days i mean this will start bubbling normally within like a day and a half two days and you'll get the bubbles appearing and you leave it about a week when it's finished bubbling uh, then you'll know it's give it about a week when it's finished bubbling give it sort of like three or four days to make sure that it's finished fermenting then it's a question of siphoning it off into the barrel but when that point arrives i'll do another video so you can see how you go about doing that but basically that's it now all you've got to do is leave i sort of leave ours in the kitchen here because it's sort of not too warm but it's not cold uh, if it get if it's too cold say in a shed or something like that during the fermentation process it'll, it'll slow it right down so you need to keep it you know fairly sort of room temperature really um i think the our front room would be ideal but sharon wouldn't let me have it in the front room so 
the kitchen is the next best place. And when it's actually finished, finished fermenting and it goes in the barrel, you leave the barrel in the same place for about another week. And when it's completely finished fermenting, then you put it somewhere cool for a couple of weeks or so, and then you can start drinking it. And it's from start to finish, really, um, you want to leave it as long as possible, really. But they say on the kits that three weeks, you know, the longer you leave it, basically, the better the beer tastes at the end. But what I'll do now, I'll just leave this for a week. And you'll know when it's starting to work because you'll get the bubbles coming up in the airlock there. And um, as I say, it'd be good to, once that's finished, it'd be good to put it in the barrel. So when this is finished fermenting, I'll do another video of barreling it up. So that'll be it for now. So see you again when it's ready to barrel up. Bye. Right, it's me again. I know I said I'd see you when it was ready to bury it up, but I think I forgot to say that in this particular kit, you have a separate packet of hops. I think it's because it's India Pale Ale, they put in hops. I think originally it was, it was to make it last longer when it was put on board ships to send out to different countries. So the hops preserve it I think I think that's what it is anyway but I mean these hops what you do is before you when it's finished fermenting before you actually barrel it up you just open the lid and sprinkle the hops actually in the fermenting bucket and you put, shut, shut the lid and then you just leave it for three or four days for the hops to work you don't bother stirring it you just actually just tip them in and they'll break up and sink to the bottom and uh, then when that's done, then you, you can finally transfer it into the pressure barrel. So I thought I'd just mention that because I forget I, for, I did forget to mention you, you need to add the hops at a later date. Okay, I'll see you later. Cheers.